This video will deal with certain optical phenomena in the human brain. I will explain that what is usually called a color constancy is in reality a simple process that is well known in computer science, especially in the fields of computer graphics and image processing, where it is being called contrast stretching. I promised to create this video many months ago, but unfortunately had no time to do so until now. So at the end of this year, I am fulfilling my promise, and here is the video about contrast stretching in the brain. In image processing, and in sciences dealing with images in general, contrast is a mathematical difference of two pixel values. If you have two pixels of brightness levels B1 and B2, you calculate the contrast between those pixels by subtracting brightness levels B1 and B2. Absolute value from this subtraction is then called contrast. So it is very simple. The bigger the difference of these two brightness values, the more contrast exists between them. When you are working with color image, the contrast is being called color contrast. Color contrast is a mathematical difference of two color values. Because color images have three or more color channels, the contrast can be easily estimated using RGB color wheel. Opposite colors on the color wheel have highest color contrast while adjacent colors have lowest color contrast. Here you see the RGB color wheel on which you can easily find highest color contrast for specific color. For example, color blue has opposite color yellow, therefore colors blue and yellow have highest color contrast. If the contrast is too low, you can of course use some algorithms to increase the difference of brightness levels between the two pixels, and by doing so, you increasing the contrast between the two pixels. Because increasing contrast only between two pixels is of little use, you usually increase contrast in the whole image, that means you change brightness values of all pixels in the image but you can also do so only in portion of the image. How you do this, I will not explain here, because changing contrast is usually a simple algorithm and it is well described elsewhere. You may look in internet for algorithms how to change contrast, for example, under the term contrast normalization. By changing contrast in the image, you always alter brightness values of single pixels. If you are working with color images, then you are altering the colors as well, because every color is defined by several color channels that represent brightness values for this channel. It is important to stress out that after changing contrast, resulting brightness values and colors will be different than the original values. So procedure of adjusting contrast is always producing false brightness and color values. And with this explained, it was already in a theory, and we can start with first example of optical phenomena representing changing contrast in human brain. In this first example, we will look on the famous chessboard optical illusion. This and following examples are all well known and you can find them on many places in internet. In this video, I just want to explain what is really hiding behind these illusions. I want to show you that behind all these illusions is nothing more than contrast stretching, which is no error, but intentionally implemented procedure in the brain which we may call as a preprocessing of the image for further use. On this image, 
you see the famous chessboard optical illusion that is strictly speaking no illusion at all. It is an example of how human brain is changing the contrast based on the brightness values of surrounding image parts. Chess squares marked A and B in the image are perceived by human brain as different brightness values. I am sure that every one of you will confirm this without further knowledge of this phenomena. But the reality is very different and your brain is fooling you here. Next pictures will show that squares A and B are of exactly the same brightness values. On the next image I will show you only those two squares mark A and B and I will mask out all other squares and the rest of the image. Here you see how those two squares A and B look after the rest of the image has been masked out. Now I am sure that most of you will now say that the background colors of those two circles marked A and B are the same. If you still have doubts or perceive some difference in brightness, look on the next image. On this image, I have removed the two characters A and B and what is left is only the background color of two squares from the first image. Now I am sure that all of you will agree that the color is exactly the same. I will now switch this image for the first one several times to make the change in brightness clearly visible. As I prove that the brightness values are exactly the same, I will show you the next image. On this image, you see background that has exactly the same color as the background of two chess squares A and B from previous images. In the center, you see the actual color value. Because the image is grayscale, but I have used RGB image color representation, there are three values that are exactly the same. Every grayscale image represented in RGB color system has three values that are always the same. In this case, the brightness value of the background is 42%. It means that the brightness value is 42 out of range of 100. Brightness value of 100% would be an absolute white color, while brightness value of 0% would be an absolute black color. It is now clear that although the exact brightness value that is coming to your brain through your eye is in both cases 42%, your brain adjusts brightness for every chess square differently. On the next image, I will explain why is human brain doing so. On this image at the bottom, you see the three actual colors that are used in chess squares marked A, B, C and D. These are real colors that are entering your brain. The reason why human brain is perceiving same color on squares A and B differently is explained as follows. Square mark A is in the center of an image area that is substantially brighter than image region where square B is located. Because of this, human brain is raising the contrast in the area where square A is located and as a consequence the actual brightness value of square A is lowered to increase the contrast in this region. This is called contrast stretching as I have explained in the beginning. Human brain is simply lowering the brightness values of square A to get bigger contrast. In the region where square B is located, the situation is similar 
but with the difference that this region is much darker and the human brain must increase brightness value of square B in order to raise the contrast. This procedure again is called contrast stretching. Now you know that the difference of brightness perception of two chess squares with same color is caused by contrast stretching and it is dependent on the brightness values of the surrounding part of the image. As a second example of contrast stretching, I will show you another optical phenomena that is well known as a gradient optical illusion. On this image, you see a horizontal stripe in the center of the image and you also see behind this stripe gray background that has a gradient of changing brightness values from bright values on the left towards darker values on the right. Most of you will say that the horizontal stripe in the center has also a gradient change of brightness values that run in opposite direction. The stripe starts on the left with darker values and ends on the right with brighter values. This is the optical illusion itself. On following image, I will show you that there is no gradient change of brightness values in the center stripe, that the stripe in the center has one single brightness value in all of its pixels, and that the reason why you perceive the center stripe as a brightness gradient is again contrast stretching in the brain. This is the same center stripe shown against background that has no gradient. You see that gradient on the center stripe disappeared as well. The center stripe has one single brightness value in all of its pixels. I will now switch this image for the previous one to make the optical illusion appear and disappear several times. Explanation for this optical phenomena is again contrast stretching in the brain. Gradient in the center stripe is perceived only because your brain is changing the brightness values in order to adjust contrast. It is the same contrast stretching as we know it from previous example. On the right, the center stripe appears to be of brighter values because surrounding background in this image part is darker and human brain is stretching contrast by increasing the actual brightness values in the center stripe. On the left side of the image, the center stripe appears to be darker because the surrounding background in this image part is brighter. Human brain is stretching contrast here by lowering the brightness values in the center stripe. This again is called contrast stretching. In between both stripe ends, the contrast is being stretched in the same way as already explained. As a result, the stripe that has only one single pixel value is being perceived as a stripe with grayscale gradient. As a third example of contrast stretching optical phenomena, I will present to you the famous red strawberries illusion. On this image, you see plate which contains red strawberries. Although the image itself is of greenish and bluish color tint, the strawberries are still perceived by your brain clearly as red. And this is the illusion. Strawberries on this image are in fact not red at all. Let's see the next image. I will show you on the next image only the area marked with the white circle because in this area there is one strawberry that you certainly see clearly as an object of red color. Do you see on this image still strawberry of a red color? It is possible that you still see some red because this image area still represents large portion of original image and some contrast stretching still occurs. 
So let's see the next image where I will zoom into this image and present you with only small portion of it. On this image you see only small portion of previous image. The object of the strawberry disappeared and with it probably also the perception of red color. Instead you see only some green and blue color mix. If you still can see some red in this image, we will continue and zoom further into this image to present you with single pixel color selected from the point that is marked with small white spot that appeared below the image center. Here you see only one single pixel from previous image that previously was perceived as some red. You clearly see that there is no red but instead there is only green-blue color in this image. On this image you see two colors that are predominant in the original strawberry photograph and that are responsible for contrast stretching that is causing the optical illusion. On the left you see color that is marked with the text surrounding and that is clearly green and blue. It has the same RGB values of green and blue components of 65%. Red RGB component has value of only 41%, so this color cannot be red at all. On the right you see color that is marked with the text strawberry and that is also clearly green and blue but is more lighter. It has the same RGB values of green and blue components of 65% but the red RGB component has bigger value of 51% so this color cannot be perceived as red either. But it is this color on the right that your brain actually perceives as a red color of the strawberry object. Why is it so? Your brain does here contrast stretching in only the red channel. It increases values of red component for the pixels that are surrounded by pixels of the color shown on the left. So imagine what will happen if I do the same what your brain is doing and raise the red RGB component value for the color shown on the right above 65%. The answer is on the next image. Here I have manually raised the red RGB component value of the color shown on the right from previous image. This is the color that your brain perceives as a red color of a strawberry object. By manually raising red RGB component value from 51% to 78%, the color became immediately red because now the red RGB component is bigger than the green and blue RGB components. And this is the contrast stretching your brain is doing on this image. Human brain has no idea that the object is a red strawberry. It does only image preprocessing by adjusting contrast values in a process that we call contrast stretching. As a consequence of contrast stretching in the red RGB channel, the color of the strawberry has been restored to red. But the human brain would do it for any object regardless if it is a strawberry, an egg or maybe a head of an extraterrestrial. All the brain is doing here is pure contrast stretching. This explains this famous optical phenomena. Changing color contrast has a consequence of changing the actual color. This is the reason why you see the strawberries red, although they are not red at all. Biggest color contrast have opposite colors, which can be seen on the RGB color wheel on this image. You see an arrow pointing on the wheel from cyan color that is a mixture of green and blue colors towards opposite color that is red. So the brain has raised color contrast without knowing that the strawberries should be red. Brain has only selected the biggest color contrast possible. 
There can be no talk about any color constancy here. All the brain is doing is increasing color contrast. Fourth illusion is called face with colored iris and it demonstrates how human brain is raising color contrast the same way as was explained in red strawberries illusion. On this image you see face of a woman and this image is grayscale, so it has no colors. But the left part of the image was graphically edited to cover the left half of the face with blue tint with the exclusion of the iris. Iris color remains purely gray. As you clearly see, the iris in left eye of the face has yellowish color, although the whole face, including iris, is completely grayscale and contains no color. This is the illusion that represents color contrast stretching. I will now switch this image for the next one several times to see the illusion. Next image is completely grayscale without the blue left part and you will see that the iris of the woman is really gray and contains no color. Explanation for this optical phenomena is as follows. Human brain is increasing color contrast in the region of the iris because it thinks contrast in this place is too low. When you increase color contrast, color that was previously gray will change to another color that can be estimated using RGB color wheel. Here you see the RGB color wheel together with the blue face. Highest color contrast have opposite colors on the RGB wheel. In this case it is blue and yellow colors. According to this, brain adjusts color contrast of gray iris towards the yellow color. As you can see, the arrow on the RGB wheel points from blue color to opposite yellow color. This is the reason why you perceive the iris as yellow, although it is actually only gray. Here you see the same face half covered with yellow tint and according to the arrow on RGB color wheel, brain is adjusting color contrast toward the blue color. Here you see the same face half covered with red tint and according to the arrow on RGB color wheel, brain is adjusting color contrast towards the cyan color. What are the conclusions from this video? First, you must remember that the human brain does not care about actual colors or brightness values. It only cares about having enough contrast. It does so by stretching the contrast in certain image areas based on the brightness values of surrounding pixels. The reason why human brain cares more about contrast than the actual color is simple. By raising contrast, human brain can detect more contours in the image and that means more detectable object. Remember that an object is defined in the first place by its contours. Colors and grayscale values of an object play a role only on second place. When you are looking on a color image, situation is the same. Your brain does not care about actual color, it only cares about raising color contrast. Stretching color contrast usually leads to change of color perception. Color contrast is more important for the brain because it means more contours and therefore easier detection of objects. Here I want to make you aware of the wrong information that neuroscience is presenting 
when it comes to explanation of the red strawberry illusion. Neuroscientists and psychologists, especially those from America, tend to explain this optical phenomena by some special brain feature that they call color constancy. They naively argue that the human brain is trying here to keep the original color of the red strawberry because strawberries are always red and it should stay so. This is wrong and it has nothing to do with serious science. I have already told you that the same red color phenomena that you have seen with red strawberry will occur with any other object. If I replace strawberries in the original image with eggs that are never red, you will still see red color although there is no red. So remember that the term color constancy is nonsense and shouldn't be used in science. There is a work of German neuroscientist Michael Bach available in internet that shows exactly what I have just said. If you replace strawberries with egg-like objects, you will still perceive their color as clearly red. Sometimes you may also encounter the term simultaneous contrast. It is a nonsense as well, because what exactly is simultaneous contrast? Is it known from physics? Is it defined somewhere? There is only one defined contrast and it does not matter if the contrast is being changed in the whole image or locally only in certain areas. Contrast is always contrast and changing it is always the same procedure. And that's all for this video. I want to thank Professor Michael Bach from Germany who has created and posted on internet compilation of many optical phenomena, among them also the red strawberries illusion. Be sure to visit his website to find out more about other illusions. His site is a valuable source of information for all those who are studying optical phenomena in detail. And finally, there is one question for all of you who are watching this video till the end. Please find the answer to this question yourself. It is an important one.